Set in the heart of Collingwood, Restaurant Clichy clearly states its policy. It offers original food in the French manner. It is not a French restaurant. Part owner and chef is Ian Hewitson. Before starting Restaurant Clichy three years ago, he'd worked as chef at the successful Lemon Tree. Initially, he and his partner set about providing a restaurant offering good food. But what surprised them most of all was the speed with which they received recognition and acclaim. And whilst Ian's ideas about his restaurant change constantly, his concept is still the same. I'm trying to prove that you can make a successful restaurant with simplicity. Uh, I think our food is basically reasonably simple, uh, which people don't really understand to the extent they should. They, they feel that there has to be sort of strong sauces and everything. It has to be sort of 19 different types of vegetable and things like this. We're trying to, to bring this over that simplicity is, is the best because we taste the best in the raw ingredients. We have to use Australian ingredients. I don't really agree with restaurants that are producing food that looks straight out of books. I don't really agree with the idea of people calling their restaurants French restaurants because obviously we're in Australia, we use Australian ingredients and we produce the best food following the concept of New Guinea cuisine. The other part owner is Sigmund Jurgensen, who is perhaps better known for his involvement with Monsilvac, which is his prime interest. When he does appear at Restaurant Clichy, then his forte is the cellar. The restaurant prides itself on its collection of imported wines as well as Victorian as distinct from Australian wines. That's the policy of the management for which they make no apologies. It's that sort of restaurant. Well, basically we are uh, offering, uh, I think, very, very good food. Uh, and the food, since we opened in 77, has got better and better. And now that we're fully licensed, we can offer a very fine range of imported wines, uh, unusual wines, plus only Victorian wines from Australia. We're totally parochial in this, in the belief that the Victorian wines are going to be the wines of the future. Uh, there are some brilliant wines being produced in this state and no one seems to want to market them. One of the main problems facing Restaurant Clichy is ironically its success. At a time when many restaurants are having difficulties, Restaurant Clichy often finds itself turning away potential customers. But is there a danger that in becoming a fashionable restaurant, those who would truly appreciate Clichy's cuisine will shy away? I hope not. I mean, that inevitably happens, I suppose. But, I mean, what we're interested in is getting people here who are interested in good food, interested in uh, being slightly experimental. Uh, you know, if, if people want to say that they've been to Clichy, fantastic in one sense, but, you know, it's not what we set out to do. The idea behind the fixed price, fixed menu, which allows for a degree of choice, came about because Ian Hewitson felt that too many people were just having one course and so they were missing out on the delights that Ian's kitchen had to offer. But do some people balk at a fixed charge of $22.50 per person? Of course there is the problem, but the, you know, I eat out on my days off and I go to many restaurants that seem cheap until I've had four courses and they're not any cheaper than us, so I just think it, it does hit them a bit between the eyes when they say 22, when we say 2250. But we're not trying to force a lot of money out of people, we're just trying to get them to come and have four or five courses. I think we've got in between the restaurants of the old-fashioned style where the food is terribly heavy. Um, we're not too formal, but I still think we offer both professional food and professional service without um, the stuffiness that used to be associated.